welcome back to the channel. It's time for another one of our I Speak Electric series. And today, I'm taking a deep dive into the world of DC fast charging. We're talking superchargers, high powered chargers, tap and go charging, and a lot more. Stick around for the details. My name is Martin Lee, and if you haven't already, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. What is a DC fast charger? Well, firstly, DC stands for direct current. The other way of charging your car is alternating current. Now, we've already made a full video about what DC is, so check it out if you want more detail. Today, we're talking about DC fast charging. We're taking a slightly different tack. We're gonna be more practical, talk about actual chargers and how you use them. So instead of looking at all the different individual units that we could use for DC fast charging, let's think a little bit bigger and talk about charging networks for a moment. We'll start with probably the most well-known one in the world, and that, of course, is the iconic Tesla supercharging network. With more than 25,000 stalls as of the time of recording, there'll be more soon, littered around the world in various degrees and density. Places like California, well, you'll trip over them every five minutes. Places like Southeast Asia, not so much. But they are close to having them in so many places that you could literally drive around the world and only Tesla supercharge. As you would imagine, the network is expanding constantly, and even the chargers themselves are developing. The latest ones, they're called V3 superchargers. They will charge well faster than 200 kilowatts. But Tesla don't have a monopoly on DC fast charging. In North America, there's Electrify Canada and Electrify America, and they've made huge strides over the last few years. Launched in 2017, following the Dieselgate scandal and the settlement that followed, the money from that paid for what was a at the time, a first few installs in 2018, but at the last count, 647 stations with another 121 in the works. And what about here in Europe? Varying networks, but perhaps the most well-known on a European-wide basis is called Ionity. Owned by many of the big car manufacturers, they have over 400 locations spread across Europe, an average of six stalls per location. Now here in the UK, a company called GridServe recently purchased the electric highway and they've opened an electric forecourt in somewhere called Braintree with over 30 chargers, DC rapid chargers, banks of the things that when you turn up you can be pretty much guaranteed there'll be something free and it'll be very fast. But I don't mean free as in cost, let's get onto that. All the talk so far has been about the chargers and the various networks, but a charger will only supply the amount of power that your car is willing to take. They talk to each other. And if you were an early adopter of EVs, your car might only be able to ask for, say, 40 something kilowatts, maybe almost 50 kilowatts if you're lucky. So even if you pull into the latest, greatest 350 kilowatt DC fast charger, you're only ever gonna charge at the maximum speed your car can take. Now, many modern EVs are taking above that now. Take something like the Volkswagen platform, the MEB platform. On top of that, cars like the VW, ID3, ID4, soon ID5, cars like the Skoda Enyaq and the Born. Those can take over 125 kilowatts. Some EVs though are pushing even further. Tesla's Model 3 and the latest Model S and Model X. Ionic 5 can charge, we think, I mean, it's only a new car, but over 230 kilowatts. And the Porsche Taycan, Audi e-tron GT, they can take 270 kilowatts in optimal conditions. So it's not as straightforward as you may think. If you pull up to a DC fast charger and see the sign, the rating, 350 kilowatts, well, it'll only take what your car can accept. And if it's something like a Mazda MX-30, one of the slowest charging cars on the market, well, it'll take 10% of the potential. That's enough about charging speeds. Let's talk about what's needed to charge your electric vehicle at a DC station. 
In the vast majority of cases, it's unfortunately not as simple as simply plugging in and walking away. Now, I hear the Tesla fans watching this saying, yes, it is. I know, the supercharging network is wonderful. The cars, the chargers, and the software all designed by one company, Tesla, and therefore it all just works together. Tesla owners get to pull up to a supercharger, plug in, and walk away, knowing the car is gonna charge. But that's not the case for other networks and chargers. In most cases, you need either an RFID card, which can be a little credit card size or even smaller thing that sits on your keyring. That's swipes on the front of the unit to tell the charger who you are. Sometimes there's an app that you can use to tell the charger it's you, but they often fall down if you're somewhere where there's no mobile signal. In many cases, to top up, your account is required in advance. Then you plug your car in, then you swipe your card, it activates the charge, and it uses that credit. Now, let's face it, that's a faff, and it adds complexity to a process that we don't need anymore. The technology exists not to do that. Some operators are installing types of tap-and-go chargers, and that's much better for those passing through an area that don't want to register for a network in a certain country. You just plug in your car, tap your bank card or credit card, and they bill you for what you've used. That takes away the hassle of downloading apps, getting subscriptions, and carrying around often many RFID cards in your wallet. So that's a broad look at DC fast charging. As we very well know in the EV world, things change fast. And if you're new to the EV world, well, let me tell you, DC fast charging may not even use wires in the future. Inductive charging, much like a giant version of what you do with your cell phone, is coming. And when costs keep continuing to decline, we may see induction pads in more places. Particularly good if you don't want to get out of your car to charge. So I'm thinking bus lanes or perhaps where taxis are parked waiting for their next fare. Maybe they'll be over the pad for five or ten minutes, but the charging speeds can be so quick with inductive charging you can add a lot of range by just parking your car over that pad for a short amount of time. Whether it'll take off in our homes is another matter because let's face it, getting out of the car, taking a plug socket and putting it in in our driveway, not the most onerous of things to do. Another technology in the works and actually being used in the real world is battery swapping. Now, Tesla tried it back in the day and didn't really have much take up, but we're going back many years now. In China, it's very popular with companies like Neo investing hugely in battery swapping. So in a sense, that may even get rid of DC fast charging altogether, as those spare batteries are always fully charged and often charged slower, which is better for battery health, and overnight, when electricity can be cheaper as well. Then you turn up to a battery swap station. Within a few moments, your old battery is taken out and a new one is simply inserted underneath your car in an automated procedure. Very popular in many parts of China, but elsewhere, we'll see if it takes off. So there we are, folks. Another whirlwind dive into the world of EVs. DC fast charging was the subject today. If you are new to the world of electric vehicles, maybe even researching because you're EV curious, we'd love to know in the comments below. Where do you live? What type of DC fast charging do you need? Are you a Tesla driver looking at everyone else's experience and going, well, we have it easy. Let me know. Let's keep the conversation going. Leave us a comment. I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up down there. It tells us to make more stuff just like this, and we'll see you on the next one.